Hi, we've got something a bit different for a review today. We've got home workout benches and we're going to answer the question, is it worth paying three times the price for a uh, good quality name brand home workout bench compared to uh, one of these no namers for a hundred bucks or 99 bucks you can get on eBay. This is a uh, pro form brand, a pretty decent quality name brand one. It's about $300, three times the price of this. Is it worth paying? extra coin for a good quality home workout bench. Let's find out. Now these style of home workout benches are what's called an FID bench or flat incline decline because not only can you have it a regular incline uh, seat like this, so not only can it go near vertical like this but it can go flat like this and it can also decline like this and the front forward one can also incline like this for various angles and well, the same with this other one and this no namer one here it's actually got uh, the leg hooks on the front so that you can put your legs in uh, and it gives you more stability and uh, greater options when say doing uh, uh, sit ups or something like that so you don't get that feature on this Proform brand one so and that's a plus for the El Cheapo. The first thing you notice with the $99 cheapie is you get what you pay for. It feels flimsy as, and we'll go into some of uh, the details up close uh, in a minute, but it's light as, and we'll get these on the uh, scale later uh, to weigh them, but it's just, it's flimsy. It does have the ability uh, to fold up. You've got a knob so this can fold back, and uh, this leg here can fold up like this so you can actually uh, store it away, and that's uh, some convenience uh, factor, but apart from that, you can just feel the lack of of quality in this thing. So to adjust this thing, you've got these really annoying uh, pins in here and you've got to like get that lined up and there you go, you've adjusted it, but then you've got to pull it out and they can like, I've had these actually um, come out just uh, like through vibration and uh, stuff because the little ball in there um, that tries to uh, keep it in, it's pretty how you're doing. So yeah, it's just really annoying and frustrating, but you could argue that, you know, if for the price, uh, just the inconvenience of doing that, it's not a major downside, I guess, for the money. It does have the ability uh, to set the length of uh, your leg holds here. It's got a uh, big thumb screw thing on the back. You unscrew it, but you, only, you wouldn't be adjusting that all the time. You set it for your one leg length, uh, and that's it. And the rubber that uh, comes on here, like these just, uh, these just like fall off. Like you'd put some like double-sided tape or some glue in there or something to try and hold that on. But yeah, these things are just, uh, you know, dodgy as. But you know, they are, it is a useful uh, feature you don't get on the um, higher end unit. And the physical build quality of this thing is exactly what you'd expect for a $99 delivered workout bench like this. It comes out flat packed and you've got to uh, assemble it yourself. Both of these you have to uh, assemble yourself, but very thin tube steel like this. And then if we uh, go down like, you know, the cheapest are uh, screws and then the uh, brace supports on these. Um, yeah, they're just like screwed into a uh, particle board there. They're, they've got like captive uh, metal threaded um, inserts into the uh, particle board, but they are they are dodgy as. They really feel cheap quality, and it feels like you could just rip them out by hand. I'm not kidding. It's that dodgy. And there's just no extra bracing coming out at the side here. So all of the weight, when you put like a weight on the sides like this, you feel as though, especially, you know, if you're a heavy person or you've got a lot of, and or you've got a lot of weight on there, you feel as though like these bolts are just gonna pull straight out of here and it's and the whole bench is just going to tip off. These are really light duty ones. I mean this has a uh, I believe a 130 kilo uh, rating on it but yeah nah it's like these things are really extremely light duty benches. So if you want to actually adjust this thing uh, decline you can't do it uh, just with this here. You've got to actually pull this pin out and then put that like that and then pull this out and boom, now we can decline like this. But then once you do that, your seat isn't uh, flat. So uh, that's a difference. But you do actually end up with a decent decline bench with the leg supports like this that you can do sit-ups on or you can do decline presses. So I've got 20 kilos of pop here. So we can do decline presses and flies and other actions. So it's not too bad. 
But as I said, the worst part about this no-name cheapy is that it's not designed for any heavy use whatsoever. Either for if you're a you know if you weigh a lot, if you're a big guy and you weigh you know 120 kilos or something, this bench ain't going to do it. If you're uh, got wide, broad shoulders like I have, this thing is too narrow. It just doesn't feel right. And as I said, the quality of this thing, look. I can just wobble this. It feels like if I actually held this down like this and I really put forth, oh yeah, I can actually feel some of the uh, cheap ass plywood inside this thing cracking. So like I, I reckon I could just physically just rip this thing off straight out of the bolts. It's just, yeah, nah. So I've got this flat and I've got the heaviest weights I've got here in my uh, lab, which is 24 kilos each. So I'm gonna uh, try and do a chest press flat on this and well I wish this was feel a vision because this does not feel stable at all my shoulder blade my shoulders are outside the oh well seriously I almost come and got to there I did not mean to do that um yeah I was just like it feels so unstable like I'm just gonna my my back is just gonna fall and topple right off this thing so I really have to stabilize this to get my 24 kilo um, dumbbell presses. It's just, yeah, nah, it just feels really dodgy as. And as for incline, it does actually feel okay when it's inclined. That stability isn't as much of an issue as it is when you're flat doing really heavy weight. So I've got uh, 16 kilos now. And if I just do, uh, you know, some bicep curls, you know, it feels pretty good. The, there's nothing wrong with it for this sort of purpose. Or if you want to do overhead presses, uh, for example, it feels all pretty stable for that. But you know, like it still wobbles a bit and you know, but for 99 bucks for light use and stuff, it's probably all right for something like this. And as far as the seat material, it feels like the cheapest uh, Chinesium quality that you can possibly get. And the stitching on it is not, it's, it's not good at all. It doesn't have quality stitching or anything, but what do you want for 99 bucks? It's a lightweight, uh, you know, cheapest bare bones possible workout bench. So how much does this turd weigh? Uh, about 9.6 kilos. You don't get much metal for your money, that's for sure. That's why it feels flimsy as. Now let's try and measure the Proform one. I'm having a real hard time holding this here, but we're talking 26 and a half kilos, right? It's two and a half times what the El Cheapo weighs. So yeah, like literally you get like two and a half times the metal for three times the price. There really is no contest between these. You can see why this costs three times the price. It's got huge, big, thick uh, bolts which have uh, padded uh, things on the bottom so they don't mark your uh, surface. It's got a carry handle here. It's got uh, wheels there so you can just wheel it around like this and really thick steel welded tubing. But the best part about the Proform one is this uh, blade design like this. It really is solid as, I'll show you this on the um, uh, side shot at the moment. This is thick as, and you can just adjust it like that. It is really very nice. Just pull like that and adjust. Simple as, and it really feels robust and top quality. It feels like this is almost uh, like, you know, commercial gym quality. I would, I would put this in the almost commercial uh, category, actually. This is certainly the minimum you'd want to buy if you're like a fitness professional and you're doing like a personal training uh, from your home garage or uh, something like that. You definitely want something of this quality minimum. Anyway, it's brilliant and you've got the same blade design here for the front and it really feels top notch. So look at the thickness of this metal bar support here. Absolutely incredible. If we measure it, the calipers, nine, almost nine and a half millimeters. That is rugged as. And you can see that this goes into an extra welded support plate already on the thick as tube in here. I mean, that is really nice attention to detail. And this is what makes it weigh two and a half times the weight of the El Cheapo, but yeah, it's just beautiful quality. The welding is great. Look at these thick as supports down here and the bolts going through, absolutely brilliant. Everything feels like it's built like a brick dunny. And for me, one of the nicest aspects, these beautiful welded supports out here so that you really get the uh, rigid stability, sideways stability on there. I would have liked to have seen like an additional uh, bracing down the bottom here like this, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna complain too much. 
And as for the board material, I'm not sure if that's uh, plywood in there or not, but there's an additional thick as board in there. Look at how thick that is. I do believe this is just plywood in here, but that is that is 12.6 uh, millimeter, well, 12 millimeters uh, thickness in there, plus the additional thickness of here. There's no contest at all with the uh, support. But you know, if you really got a really expensive uh, top uh, dollar commercial brand one, this would be a uh, you know a five millimeter steel backing plate. You know, one's designed for like your really like Olympic heavy duty uh, benches, but you typically won't get those in this um, FID adjustable uh, style. You typically only get those in like the flat uh, benches, really designed for like your really big power lifters and bodybuilders for doing massive uh, weights. But this is more than good enough for almost anyone. This Proform bench has a total lifting capacity of 276 kilos, 136 rating uh, for the person, plus 140 kilos for the weight. So, you know, and, and it feels like this could easily meet that specification and probably exceeds it. It's probably being a bit conservative. It's very nice, but of course, it's not quite the same as a uh, fixed uh, bench, which is what you'd want for serious heavy power lifting and bench presses and stuff like this. These adjustable FID benches are not designed for really heavy bench press uh, work and stuff like that. This is more of uh, your general purpose one you'd find in the you know the free form section of your uh, gym in front of all the uh, dumbbells and you'd be using this for dumbbell curls and dumbbell presses and all sorts of you know stuff like that rather than uh, barbell stuff. So yeah I'm just generally impressed with the uh, quality of the metal work and the welding and the thickness and the bolts and the design of this thing. It's just absolutely it's easily worth three times the cost of the other flimsy one. You, you, definitely no complaints with this. So if I get on this one with my 24 kilo dumbbells here, got it flat, let's go back and oh man, I don't have to worry about falling off the side and this one's wider, we'll measure it in a second, but yeah, I don't have to worry about stability. I can even bring my legs up with this, which I can't do with the other one. I just fall straight off and that's 48 kilos dumbbell bench presses and I feel really great and stable. Don't even have to put my feet down and I'm not missing the leg supports at all. Nice. And this uses uh, high density foam in it. It's got box uh, stitching on it and it's just way nicer quality than the other one. I mean, seriously, there's no contest. And as far as width goes, pro form here, 310 millimeters and the Genki uh, 275, almost 280. It's just no contest. And as far as height goes, the pro form you can see is uh, lower height and it's uh, 440 millimeters, whereas the Genki is 490. And for me, the Genki feels probably just too high. I'm only a uh, smidge under 5'9", so I'm not a tall guy, I'm just average. And the Genki just feels slightly too high. Uh, the Pro Form feels like you know, it was designed uh, at just the right height. I really like it. And you can really see the difference in the widths here. It's almost comical. The <laughs> Pro Form is 700 millimeters base on there and it's all properly welded and everything else. 700 millimeters. The Genki is barely 300. You gotta be shitting me. And this is why the cheap ass one just feels so unstable and such poor quality. There's just like, when you use these things, it's chalk and cheese. And you can see that the Pro Form is uh, longer as well than the Genki. And so longer, wider, it's just more suitable uh, for the average size person or a large person. Like the Genki might be okay for like Mrs. EV blog, for example, who's like 48 kilos soaking wet and uh, five foot one, um, uh, like just doing light weights. These are like, but for me, I'm just average. I am not a big guy at all. And this just feels so inadequate. Um, it's just, it's not funny. And again, the front base on this thing is much wider on the pro form, adds to that uh, stability, the vibe of the thing, and the big, huge welded handle on it. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, it, it, it's just, seriously, there is no contest between these, but you wouldn't expect it. It's a bit of an unfair comparison when the pro form is three times the price. But you know, it, this is what the shootout is for. Is it worth spending three times the price for uh, you know a good quality one as opposed to the 100 buck cheapie. So what's my verdict? Is it worth spending three times the price, 300 bucks for a decent quality Proform one like this? Um, or 
do you get the 100 buck cheapie? For my mind, there's absolutely no contest at all. You are wasting your money getting this $100 cheapie. Seriously, you'll be massively disappointed. It'll probably fall apart on you in no time. It's unstable. It's just, no, like, it's 10 kilos. I'm gonna just throw this thing up and just throw it in. Look, the cap fell off. My goodness, look, here's the, here's the, here's the steel tube in it, right? It's, it's thin as, let me measure it. Oh, one and a half millimeters. One and a half millimeters. This is comical. Like, seriously, <laughs> come on. But if I do the pro form here, what is that? 4.7 millimeters, come on, seriously. Like, that's just the base. So seriously, do yourself a favor and pay three times the price and get something like this pro form. It doesn't have to be this pro form, but generally speaking, you can go by the weight of the thing. How much does it weigh? You can usually get that uh, spec on the shipping on the uh, website and it should, the specification should be in there. And of course, this blade design is just absolutely brilliant. There are a couple of manufacturers, I believe, who actually make these blade design uh, ones and they're, they're really highly recommended. It's so easy to use, don't get one with those pull out pins they're just cheap and nasty like spend three times the price trust me it's worth it and in case you're wondering what dumbbells i was using these are our everfit brand but once again they come on to many different brands um they come out of the same factory you can probably get them under a dozen uh different brands and they're adjustable weight plates as i said maximum 24 kilos you can get uh, pound versions um as well uh for you yanks but uh, yeah basically you just dial in the weight you want so if we just dial in two and a half kilos like that then boom <laughs> you just get that and adjustable uh plates and these things are uh, there, I, one, one of mine, one of the adjustable things, it's a bit how you doing dodgy um, in terms of uh, like sometimes I can't rotate it and I've got to whack it and manipulate it into place to get it to turn. So the mechanism isn't, you know, isn't the greatest, but these are so handy. So I do actually recommend them because you can get an entire dumbbell set basically um, for a, like I use them in my lab here and they take up no space at all. And see, there it is there. I cannot get that to bloody turn. Yep, I chose my dodgy one. But there you go, I did actually get it to turn once I manipulated it a bit. And it has to go in the base like this because it has uh, the special hook in there that uh, enables, because you can't turn uh, these things, so they can't fall out. So you can turn them upside down like that, no worries. But yeah, I, I recommend these things. They're actually, uh, they're not too, you know, there's really nothing else on the market uh, that comes close to this in terms of uh, weights um, for like a physical space. So yeah, highly recommend And 24 kilos is good enough um, as an absolute max. So you can get, I think you get like 16 kilo, like smaller uh, weight uh, variation ones um, as well. But I believe this is the maximum, 24 kilos. Highly recommended. They're pretty good value. And the lack of uh, leg supports on uh, this particular model, not a huge deal. I mean, it's, you know, it's handy to have them if you've got, uh, like if you're doing decline work and some decline work and stuff like that, but still doesn't stop you doing uh, decent decline work and you can just put it up against the wall anyway and your feet can just go against the walls. So it's not really a big limitation. It's certainly, I wouldn't go, oh, that one's got leg support, so I'm gonna go for the cheap ass one. No, don't do it. <laughs> This is much more versatile bench and this will last you a long time. And you can do reverse uh, decline work on these, uh, for example. So you can put your hands under here and it really feels like solid. You're not gonna rip it out and you can do leg lifts and crunch, reverse crunches and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's pretty good. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my shootout review of FID uh, benches, flat in time, klein, decline between a 300 buck one and a $99 jobby. Don't get the $99 one. It's just gonna be a world of disappointment. This thing weighs 26 and a half kilos. It's stable as, and it's got the great quality uh, blade mechanisms, really easy to use. You don't have to fiddle around with those stupid pins. Do not buy those pin ones. They're just a world of hurt. And these FID benches, I would actually recommend them uh, for home and general use over just a flat bench. Like, there's nothing better than a good, just solid, thick as flat bench, right? But these FID benches are so versatile, you can do a ton of different stuff. I've only scraped the surface of what you can actually exercise as you can do on these. And whatever one you choose, make sure it's wide, it's stable, it weighs a lot. <laughs> just the sheer weight on the uh, listing of a product can tell you what quality you're gonna get. All Almost three times the amount of metal for three times the price. It's well worth paying for. So 
there you go. I hope you enjoyed that uh, review shootout. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. And if you've got any other uh, recommendations for good quality um, FID uh, benches, um, in addition to the uh, Proform one, leave it in the comments down below. Catch you next time.